Now, let's get more on that headline story that a videotape of an inmate at Guantanamo Bay being interrogated has been released. It's the first time such pictures have been seen publicly. In a moment, we'll speak once again to Mike Waldrich, our correspondent. But let's first see again just a small extract from that video, although the sound quality is pretty poor on the tape. But let's have a look. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I think you're getting good medical care. No, I'm not. You're not here. I lost my eyes. I lost my feet, everything. No, you still have your eyes, and your feet are still at the end of your legs, you know. Look, I want to take a few minutes. I want you to get yourself together, you know. Relax a bit, have a bite to eat, and we'll start again. You know, I understand this is stressful, but you know, by, 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 by using this as a strategy to talk to us, it's not going to be any more helpful. I mean, we've got a limited amount of time, and, you know, we've heard this story before. You don't care about me, that's what... Well, I do care about you, but I want, I want to talk to the, to the honest Omer that I was talking to yesterday. I don't want to talk to this Omer. It was an honor. Yes, it was. You see, you're not going to believe me. Well, look me straight in the eyes and tell me that you're being honest. I am being honest. Well, as promised, let's speak to Mike Waldridge, our World Affairs correspondent. And Mike, that's just a short extract. Mm. It goes on for a lot longer. What do we know in terms of the factual detail about what we were seeing there? Well, Omar Ghada was picked up in, uh, by U.S. forces in Afghanistan in the middle of 2002. Uh, this material apparently was obtained in uh, the early part of 2003, when he'd already then been taken to, to Guantanamo Bay. Uh, incidentally, he's due to face trial by one of the U.S. military commissions that have been set up specially for the Guantanamo detainees in October of this year. And it's the release of this material now comes about because of that forthcoming trial. This has been ordered by the Sena uh, Canadian Supreme Court. They've ordered the government to release uh, this material. Now, um, how exactly was this, this footage shot? We don't really know. The, the latest reports coming in about this uh, uh, from Canada itself suggests that the tape was shot through the flaps of a ventilation shaft somehow in the in the questioning center there now what we're seeing apparently uh, is uh, a Canadian official a Canadian intelligence uh, official um, obviously we heard him there talking about his detention talking about the conditions is he getting medical treatment and so on trying to encourage him him to talk that's what we see in this particular extract about 10 minutes of tape has been released so far. That's part of that. And apparently there's, uh, there's more to come uh, later in the day. And it's been suggested that there's footage covering some uh, seven and a half hours of questioning over, over three days uh, for, for Omar Khadr. And it's the first time I mentioned there, it is the first time we're really getting a glimpse of this. And it's interesting that uh, Amnesty International Canada has written to the Canadian Prime Minister saying, and I'm quoting here, it is shocking to learn as far back as five years ago, Canadian officials knew of the torture, the ill treatment that uh, this man experienced, but did not intervene on his behalf. There will be a lot of pressure as a result of this sort of footage being shown. I think they probably will. I mean, obviously, over the years, over these last five years, six years now of Guantanamo Bay, um, there's been a lot of concern about the uh, conditions for the uh, detainees and particularly about the circumstances in which they are uh, questioned. Now, at that time, so little was known about it. I'm, I went on a media facility trip myself just about at this time. I mean, we couldn't even see the detainees and we asked to speak to those who were interrogating them, flatly refused and so on. There was one uh, slightly revealing thing. One of the medical staff we talked to asked about uh, uh, what uh, their sort of psychiatric conditions would you say, and he revealed in the course of that that there had been what he called a number of suicide attempts. So, and then more came out on that later. So those sort of things have certainly, uh, in, in the eyes of critics of the whole Guantanamo Bay, Bay process, obviously compounded the concern. Uh, uh, on uh, that material that we've seen there, uh, according to reports from those who've seen more of it, um, he displays his wounds to uh, the person who's, who's questioning there, the interrogator, um, and he cries and he pulls at his hair in, in despair, as one, as one correspondent says, who's, who's seen this material. So I think as more of this comes out, you're right, it will revive a lot of those issues around the interrogation techniques. Have they changed over the years since then? Obviously, the Americans have sought to give assurances to the international community as the pressure has grown, not, not only 
for uh, more, more to be disclosed about the conditions that also cause pressure for Guantanamo Bay to be closed down altogether. Okay, Mike Wardridge, thanks once again. Thank you.